we are live. So, welcome to The Mandalorian Season 1, Episode 1, Thoughts. And this episode is called The Mandalorian. The first episode of The Mandalorian is The Mandalorian. Spoilers for the Star Wars movies leading up to this point and this episode, and I might discuss theories that might spoil upcoming episodes in this video. One of my subscribers and frequent commenters, Arts Cafe, requested that I do videos on the show. Dude, thank you. I am loving it so far. Moon Knight is, I want to say, six weeks away from airing, so here I am. I'll do one of these episodes per week. I'm currently not planning on doing other shows, even mini series, at the same time as I do an MCU one. And the MCU ones, I'll do them as soon as they air, but I'll probably return to this as soon as there's one or more weeks between two different MCU shows, and, you know, so far, there's... I, f I forget if it's every single time, but several times, there's been a week with nothing between two MCU. So, yeah, that's when I'll return to this after these first six. And... Let's see. Yeah, so... This video is not a review, it's a series of, well, thoughts. Some of this analysis, some of this jokes, etc. When the entire show has aired and I've been able to watch every single episode of all the seasons they make, I will do a spoiler-free review, so I will not be going into my regular review stuff in this video. Now, personally, I don't think there's a problem with people who aren't big fans of Star Wars, review them, comment on them, but I know for some people it is very important that only big fans do so. My, I, yeah, so I want to make it clear, even though I criticize some Star Wars stuff, I am a really big fan, and I'm just going to very briefly give my ratings and ranking. Episodes 4 and 5 are both 10 out of 10. Episode 6 is a 6. All three prequels are 5 out of 10. Episode 7 is a 7 out of 10. Rogue 1 is an 8. I haven't 100% decided how I feel about episode 8 yet, but yeah, so those are those, and ranking them from worst to best episodes 2 3 1 6 7 rogue 1 episode 4 and episode 5 and yeah so i would say this this episode first episode of this yeah season 1 episode 1 it's quite good i i really really liked it and i forgot to write down exactly who okay i'm going to try to do this from memory the people who made really good YouTube videos talking about this episode were New Rockstars, and I want to say Magic Maggie did a, a compelling reaction video to it. And so, let's see. There aren't really any broad performances in this episode. It is a fairly dark episode. The acting is great. I think the episode lives up to its potential based on the concept. It explores. The episode has great character moments for all major characters. Everyone behaves in character. And it does decent on diversity. You know, I wish there were more women other than the armor and some people in, in the flashback and, and some of the aliens. It's pretty much all men. But, you know, Pedro Pascal is Latino, Carl Weathers African American. The Guy in the lab coat, I'm afraid I did, I forget his character name. I don't think it's said in the episode. Anyway, you know, the, the guy in the lab coat who works with Stormtroopers is an Iranian-American. And IG-11 is played by Taika Waititi, whose father is Maori, and he refers to himself as a Polynesian Jew. Jumping into the chronological notes. Okay, so for right away, loving the tone. This is a much grayer Star Wars than some of the too safe Disney Star Wars, and I am here for it. And just from right away, we're looking at a Western, unapologetically a Western in space, which was, you know, it wasn't the only thing that the original trilogy was, but it was a significant chunk of it. You know, Luke loses his parents and goes, uh, you know, it's... I forget if it's... I guess it's more the, the camera angles used and, and the... Yeah, the way it's filmed and edited is right out of a Western, and Han Solo, you know, walked right out of a Western and into Star Wars. 
The scene in the bar really shows that Amando can improvise, use the environment and the situation to his advantage. You know, the the alien, the one of the aliens tries to run out the door, so Mando, you know, I want to say he used like a grappling thing on his leg so he can't run, and then he shoots the door control, cutting him in half with the door, and he uses the drink as a weapon. Just, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think you're getting ahead of yourself. I can bring you in warm, or I can bring you in cold. It's true. When the handbill says dead or alive, the rest of us just shoot you in the back, put you on top of a perch somewhere, and bring you dead in over a saddle. And Mando arrives at the ship. I am loving how much personality everyone we've met so far, and really the entire episode, everyone has personality. You know, they're not, there's not this, this fear of offending someone in the audience with, you know, up upsetting anyone. These are, yeah. And, and uh, uh, I forgot to note the guy's name, but the guy who drives the, the speeder that they use is this comedian... I forget his name, but he was on Just Shoot Me, and just, yeah, big fan of the guy. He's incredibly funny, and he's great in this episode. And the ride gets eaten, and the creature comes at them. The Star Wars galaxy is dangerous again, and I love it. I love that he uses electricity against the giant creature. If you try to shoot it with a laser, it'd have a difficult time getting through the hide. But electricity, yeah, contact with the skin is going to make that a very powerful weapon. And the the captive goes around the, the ship, like, talking to, to pretend like he's still, you know, like, to, to cover up for how he's clearly trying to, to get away from there. And Mando's just, Mando only re responds at the very end. He's not much of a conversationalist. But yeah, the guy actually unlocks the weapons hold. And I'm thinking either Mando was going to check on him anyway, or there's maybe, like, when you open the weapons hold, it like sets off a blinking light on the dashboard so he can know because of course someone's gonna try that. And if I had to guess, I'd say there's probably some kind of Judge Dredd style. Like if he tried to use one of the guns, it would, you know, ah, what's, what's it called? Mis misfire, I guess, and like explode in his hand or something. And we see that he, you know, froze some of the captives in carbonite, which I want to say was new rock stars pointed out. He brought them in cold. The guy says he wants to be home for life day. So the holiday special is canon. Did you catch them all? Wouldn't be much of a Pokemon master if I couldn't. Good detail that I want to say they called it Imperial Credits. It won't work anymore since the Empire is gone. Do you want the chit or not? Language. You said you were the best in the Parsec. Or wait, was it? The, someone said you were the best in the Parsec. Nice to see that correctly used in Star Wars. We have you four to one. I like those odds. Based on the bar scene, I believe him. And a small alien is being spit roasted while another member of the same species is alive in a cage, which I guess means this is the alien equivalent of lobster, and at any moment, Tom Hardy's gonna jump in there with the creature and start biting its head off. And I I have to admit, I didn't catch this, but I want to say it was, again, near Rockstars. That creature is apparently the same species as... I don't remember the character's name, but the... the that, you know, really obnoxiously laughing little thing in Jabba's Palace in Episode 6. So yeah, I guess someone making this episode also does not like that creature. And yeah, we're told Mandalorian was a foundling. What he brought back will sponsor many more. We see his memories of his parents hiding him for safety. I appreciate we get some background, but without like an absolutely absurd amount. I'm honestly not surprised that it's more issues with parents because this is Star Wars. But the yeah. Uh, the the um, when when he's when his parents were attacked, that was the the superstar ah uh, no not super uh, super super battle droids from the prequels and 
you know, that explains why he doesn't like droids, and that that's also, I forget, I, I want to say it's like some part of the expanded universe or EU, the, that, that guy in episode four who says that, that he doesn't serve droids, you know, the bartender, apparently according to the EU, that's because his, like, I, I forget if it's him personally or maybe his parents, but, you know, someone in his family was attacked by battle droids and yeah which is a nice way to try to get like make it a little less like iffy that so many star wars characters really can't stand droids so when he gets that the payment in that kind of metal he uses it to sponsor more of his kind you know otherwise they starve or are slaves like ray was and Mando struggles to ride the Blurg. I, I quite like that there is this, like, he was trying to kill it, like, five minutes ago. And now he has to try to ride it. And just, just this, this, like, the Star Wars galaxy, you don't know who you're going to be working with. You know, and also, in over the course of the episode, he finds himself working with a droid. You know, and, and the droid, at first, is also like, you know... Yeah, does not really want to be working with him. So I, I quite like that, you know, you, you don't know who you're going to have to work with in order to accomplish your goals because it's not really, you know, no, no one individual is completely capable of solving all of their problems on their own. And that's also, you know, one of the themes of Star Wars is, you know, it, it might not be your family, you know, it might not be your blood relatives, but, you know, find someone and you're stronger together. Bounty droid IG-11 is a badass. When Mando and IG-11 work together to shoot a bunch of aliens, it's one of the rare times in a new Star Wars thing where I feel a real sense of danger for major characters. Like, honestly, until they commandeered... Yeah, commandeered the, the Gatling gun, I was not sure... I was like, how are they going to get out of this? And, and I'm really glad that they didn't, like, have some really lame thing happen, but... Uh, I like how IG-11 keeps saying, I must self-destruct, and, and Mando has to talk him out of it. It's 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 a very dark joke, but it's very on-brand for, for this show so far. And, and like, the self-destruct, it, it has, like, a thermal detonator. So, yeah, that's a good... But, yeah, laser Gatling gun. That, I, I didn't know that I needed that, but, you know, sometimes Star Wars knows you better than you do. And when Mando commandeers it, it's so incredibly cool. They said 50 years old. Different spe species age different. I'm a doctor, not a babysitter. And Mando can't let IG-11 kill a defenseless child. Probably recognizes his younger self in it, other than species, obviously. And I, I quite like, you know, I, I, I had heard that he was going to take, like, like, that... That he travels with, you know, people called him Baby Yoga, but Yoda. Yoda. I want to say his name is Grogu, I heard. So, yeah, that's why I called him Yoga. My brain jumped ahead to the other word before my tongue got there. And, yeah, the, the, I, yeah, I wasn't quite sure, it was, you know, how are they going to end up there. But, yeah, you know, he, he sees this defenseless child. You know, and and the the you know Yoda, Grogu. I'm guessing like I don't know. I I don't yet know exactly how much he understands of the world around him, but like he must have heard the the all that gunfire and you know, yeah. So he must be somewhat aware that he was just rescued. Yeah. That that he was just rescued by Mando, so yeah, you know that that would make you a bit more open to to someone as a parent, even though you can't see their face. And the endings credits say, based on Star Wars, this is definitely more Star Warsy than you know. I suppose episode episode eight. I I just got done watching episode eight. 
That one is also very Star Warsy, but this is more Star Warsy than than Episode Seven. I have spoken. So yeah, looking really looking forward to the next episode. Catch you next week.